Minecraft is one of the best PC games of the last decade, but it would be nowhere without the ingenuity of its players. So what if you don't have a creative bone in your body? You can download the genius of others instead. Brush your personal failings aside while we recommend to you the most impressive Minecraft maps ever made. Oh, and remember to like and subscribe. That's something you can do at least. It's Newton versus Darwin in a fight to the death, your death to be specific. In the dropper, you hurl yourself from great heights and try to steer safely to the ground. You want to collide with any webs and waterfalls you can along the way, anything that might help break your fall rather than your neck. It's a simple premise, but the maps are devilishly clever. For instance, there's one that asks you to set yourself on fire, extinguish the flames, and pull off a perfect landing. There's a sequel too, where the levels become even more elaborate. You're either dropping through strands of DNA, hurling past gigantic unborn babies in the womb, or recreating Saruman's fall from Isengard. Mostly you're dying though, got to be clear about that. Are there any video games that can't be improved by a bit of parkour? AAA developers don't seem to think so, and neither does the creator of Biome Box. This is an adventure map made up of devious obstacle courses, and you know what? Minecraft makes a surprisingly fun and challenging jumping simulator, even without the ability to run up walls or climb steeples. Of course, there are also plenty of Ezio skins available on the internet, but you're not allowed to wear one unless you can pronounce his surname properly. Say it with me. Ezio Auditore di Firenze. You'll have to practice the R's on your own time. Me and you have got a lot of maps to get through. Some Minecraft players simply don't feel alive unless they're starving themselves. This map makes survival deliciously tricky by encasing all of the land in tiny jars, then lifting them high up into the sky. Don't get me wrong, it's a bit weird to see a bottle of sheep or pigs suspended in mid-air, but there's a haunting stillness to these floating prisons that makes World in a Jar a must-see. Aside from anything else, this is the only way to live in a floating glass box without becoming David Blaine, and I know that's something we all seek to avoid. The thing about Oscar-winning space movie Gravity is that really it should be called anti-gravity. That just makes sense, doesn't it? Deadly Orbit is what happens when someone gets the wrong end of the stick. Here's a space-themed survival map set aboard the International Space Station but with no weightlessness whatsoever. You'll only be floating as far as the jump button will take you. Even so, this is an ambitious build that can be breathtaking to explore. Speaking of breathtaking, I've, um, I've got some bad news. The creepers have learned to survive without air, but um, NASA fit these things with escape pods, so should be fine. Wandering is a horror map, and it's utterly haunting from the first few steps. <clears throat> Better? Wandering is utterly haunting from the first few steps. You play as Jack, a 30-year-old man who returns home from a tiring day at work, only to find that someone, or something, has followed him in through the front door. Could we have the creaky door sound effect, please? Good grief. Right, let's move on. Imagine a Skyrim dungeon so elaborate and varied that if Bethesda were to make it, they'd never have time to work on the rest of the world. That's Hero Brian's Mansion, a maze of intimate libraries and cavernous lairs designed to be navigated by two friends or more. This is the work of a collective called Hypixel, and I want you to remember that name because they're one of the community's most respected teams. The mansion remains their masterpiece, stuffed with secret passages, magic potions, and enemies you've never seen before, not to mention half a dozen bosses. You won't forget them in a hurry. Terry Pratchett wrote about a world carried on the back of a tortoise, but he never quite got off his bum to build it with his own hands. Atropos is a Minecraft map that plants a whole steampunk city on top of a tortoise and then covers the entire thing with brass pipes and clockwork gears. The level of detail is, frankly, a bit mad. Even the animal shell is a beautiful mosaic of metal plates, and if you descend into its belly, you'll find more city there. Why waste giant tortoise space when you've got it, I suppose? Death. You're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. It's an essential part of life. 
is also the only means of progression in the morbid puzzle map 30 Ways to Die. Here, players are kitted out with specific tools for each level and have to work out how to use them in order to kill themselves. It's really charming stuff, unlike anything else in the Minecraft map catalogue and the perfect antidote to when you've played too many server minigames. Sweet relief, you might say. Let's take a quick break for existential horror. Okay, we're good. On to the next one. Survival Horror is a self-explanatory map built by Hypixel, who, ah, uh, you got it. If you can remember who the power players are in the Minecraft community, you'll go far. Hypixel must have some sort of fixation with the high-end housing market, because this one also takes place in a mansion. But rather than push you through a dungeon, it asks you to survive 25 waves of ghouls and beasties. You have limited resources to pull from, and to make matters spookier, the mansion's electricity generator has a habit of failing. Not that you're scared of the dark or anything. Me neither. Well, obviously. Diversity is something we can all get behind. As its name suggests, this one doesn't pigeonhole itself into a single map type. Instead, you're looking at a whole host of different games. After you complete each mini-map, you'll get a ball of wool, and eventually you can build wool monuments to your own achievements. Who needs validation when you can just pick up yourself? This is the perfect final entry, actually, because diversity collects together almost every style we've been talking about so far. You've got adventure maps, parkour maps, dropper maps, the whole shebang. Man, what a journey we've been on in this video, eh? We've laughed, we've cried, we've... Oh, come on. Don't forget, you can share your own favourite maps in the comments. Be there or be square. Right, that's it. They're cubes, not squares, and I won't stand for basic script inaccuracies when it comes to quadrilaterals. I'm out. I'm out.